I'm going to do a demo here and on Floyd 3 try to write a large file, fill up a file system, and then try to deal with it. Let me share my desktop. I was going to do this on Floyd 3 because it's a bigger system. Let me see where we are here. So I just kind of left the system alone. Again, a majority of this problem is the fact that I have this large slab. And one of the things I need you to notice here, adding all these things together, I have a 260 gig machine and I'm only showing 210 gig of memory. The other 50 gig, in my opinion, is somewhere in the slab, but is not being accounted for correctly. If I were to do a BC free dash F or write a two into uh, the drop underscore caches and trim the slab, all these being added up would then come back to the 260. What did we have here? So I got a 264 gig machine. But when I add all this stuff up, I'm only getting 210 gig there. So that's 50 gig that's missing on this machine right now. And uh, during reboot and stuff like that, at some point I'm going to try to push the slab down, see how long that takes. And also when I do trim the slab, that missing 50, 50 gig will come back. Let me see if I can spot it here. I had an example, here we are, so here was another example, not quite as bad, looks like I got about a 20 gig slab, and adding it up, it came up to about 240 gig on a 260 gig machine. But right here, I did a drop cache is equals two, which started trimming the cache. But look at here, there is a little window here between when the cache actually, the slab, I'm sorry, when the slab started getting trimmed. And my missing memory came back, and then we started seeing the slab get trimmed. So I don't know what's going on with that missing memory. I've not filed a PV on it. I have uh, let engineering know that I'm seeing that. And that's what I'm seeing right now. I'm missing memory, but I have a huge slab. So as I try to push the slab down and stuff, I suspect that the total, when I add them all back up, will come back to 250. Another thing that can cause this to be greater than 250, however, is shared memory. If I, first of all, when I attach to a shared memory segment, it's going to show up in three places. Now, this is important for me to get across to you. If I'm attaching to shared memory, it will show up in Shemem. It will also show up in Cached. So that's why I don't put Shemem into this field. If I subtracted Shemem from Cache clean, then I might be able to keep the two apart. But the other thing is when I have a shared memory segment attached to a process, it will show up in cache clean and in mapped. So if I had a 100 gig system and I attached to a 100 gig Shemem process, that 100 gig would show up as 100 gig in cache clean, 100 gig in Shemem, but also 100 gig in mapped. So cache clean and mapped would double count it. Now, for a while there, I was subtracting Shemem from the cache clean so that I could keep the two separate. However, the derived metrics in PCP do not handle negative numbers. And when I started getting negative numbers, my uh, PM chart for memory would uh, basically fall apart and show nothing when numbers started going negative. Irix's gross view had that same problem. And PCP doesn't have the ability to say, if it's negative, just make it a zero instead of going negative. So we're still in the same shape we were before. Most of my memory is the slab. 
I still have those periodic flushes going on. My memory is all slab again. Slab top dash S space C. By the way, doing stuff like this is when I wish I had multiple screens and could be able to watch multiple uh, displays at the same time. I've only got so much desktop space here when I'm presenting. Again, most of my memory is this XFSI nodes. 134 gig is on XFSI nodes. Numalink traffic, again, that's the flushing going on. The slab is spread across everything. When I do a uh, node info, I'm seeing that the slab, again, free. We're pretty much out of memory in most everything, which means if I do need memory, I'm going to have to start doing some trims. I'm still not sure why my dirty is so bad. I don't want to touch that right now. And by the way, I am seeing some problems here with, I just saw some uh, misses and some foreigns going on. Let me see if I can catch another one. But I'm not sure why I've got so much dirty data going on here. I'll do an IO top. Find is running, XFS, this is flushing data here. I just saw journaling activity. Not a whole lot of data. I don't have an easy way to know what's in that uh, dirty portion. Let me do an LSOF, type into uh, sort dash RNB dash K7, pipe into more. Uh, not really relevant. I've got 150K. Again, you've got to be able to throw stuff away. So that perf that data, I'm sure, is not the dirty data. So that dirty data is uh, not related to anything that's open, it looks like. Interesting here, I removed the file, and it is showing it deleted now. It does appear to still be open. Do I have a, uh, I do have a perf command running. Let me do a kill all on perf. So that's an example where I removed the file and it showed it was deleted, but there was still data out there because perf still had it open. Let's see if this changed now. So now that uh, deleted perf.data file is gone. I do advise you to keep uh, uh, keep the idea of using LSOF to catch open files. And again, I'm sorting on the size of the file. Some of these are garbage counters and stuff like directories and stuff. Did that change my dirty at all? I don't suspect it did. Yeah, I still have uh, two gig or so of dirty data. I don't want to flush it right now. I just want to see what's going to happen here. Okay. So what I was going to do, let's do a DF-H first. I've got a large scratch file system. There's three some terabyte of data that's still available in that file system. So what I want to do is write a dirty data. Uh, before I do that, let me get one more display up here. So I'll build a display here. Get to uh, mem util I'm going to do a uh, dirty and write back only because I want to look at the flushes. Is there anything else that I want to 
want to track here. Uh, let's track system time in here. And then disk. Primarily, I'm only going to be interested in the, uh, the writes for the disk. Because I'm only looking at dirty data and write in this uh, lab example. Uh, disk block writes. That looks good. Well, let's do it by bytes. Write byte, bytes. So I have very, very low system time. Uh, let me go back to the memory here. I want to edit chart. I want to change that to a stack bar. Again, I got mostly dirty. What do we got here? 12 meg on a, there we just had a flush occur. And you can actually see the disk activity and the system time associated with the flush that just happened. So we're in that flush situation. This appeared to be metadata, but again, I got two gig of dirty data, and I don't see what it is from any of this. The other thing I'm going to do here, this is bad. I don't want to normally do this. Dirty background ratio is the point at which we start flushing. I'm going to set it up high so that I don't flush by the amount of memory that's dirty. I want to flush by age, for example. Dirty background ratio is the point at which we start flushing. Dirty ratio is the maximum memory that can be dirty and write back, and that cannot exceed 50%. If I set this to 60, it would still default to 50. So this is the point at which we start flushing. This is the point at which processes get put to sleep waiting on I.O. Now, having said that, currently this background ratio is not working as I would expect. In other words, when I start writing, there is an I.O. background thread that starts writing right away, even though I'm not at 50% dirty yet. Personally, I don't like this, because then I don't have a delayed write and delayed allocations occurring which means potentially higher fragmentation. One of the things we try to do is write our data into the cache, pause for a little bit of delayed write, and this gives the cache the ability to suck up more of my file, and the delayed write gives me the chance to get a better idea of how big the file is going to be and to try to allocate it in a more contiguous fashion. Now, on older kernels, this dirty background ratio would work, but right now, once I start doing I.O., it's going to start flushing immediately. However, if I kill the process that's doing the writing, then that background thread of doing this write stops. And if I'm below dirty background ratio, the flushing will stop at that point. If I drop dirty background ratio back down, it should kick the flush demon back in again. So what I'm going to try to do here is write a single large file into this XVM file system, watch it go dirty to write back, and then watch the disk activity. And then I'm going to see the file in memory with LSOF. And then I'm going to remove the file and watch the DF command as well. So I've got DF here. By the way, let me go into var temp here. get rid of these uh, scratched files here. I still got noise on the system because I still got a lot of dirty data that I'm not sure what it is even from. So removing that file got very little change there. A little bit of system time for that removal. We do still have some IO8. Let me just take a look at that. Uh, so here's that one, uh, 3.5, 1.5 IO8. And it looks like it's primarily this thing here, XFS buff D, 
XVM. By the way, one thing that's not relevant in this class, but I'm going to do anyways, there's a command called block trace. Let me do a top disk first here. I wonder if this is going to work. Uh, BLK trace uh, slash dev slash LXVM slash SCR. I've never done it on this type of device. I've always done it on the raw block device, but let's see what happens here. So I'm now tracing all the IO operations going into slash dev LXVM SCR. Now, there's going to be a file generated on a per-CPU basis. That's why I've created a subdirectory here. And I'm profiling every individual I.O. operation that's going on to this file system right now. Let's see what we got here. I'm trying to find that I.O. 8. Got a flush going on right now. I think I'm good enough with this. So now out of that, I've got one per CPU for the interrupts that were being handled there. Let's just take a look at what was going on with CPU 54. There is a block parse command. And I wanted uh, 54, this one here. Let's just see what we get in here. So here is all the uh, flushing activity. Now, uh, in the advances admin workbook, and you can find documentation out there to describe each of these. This is like the major minor number. We got timestamps. This is the IO operation number. This is actually the position in the file system we're going to and the number of blocks and then who's doing it. So I'm able to see all that flush activity. And then at the end, I'm able to see uh, specifics. I'm not sure why I got more than one CPU in that example. 54 was the one we were looking at. So during that interval, we had uh, over 6,000 IO operations that got queued up. There's also a command block IO mon that will put that thing into a uh, versus type of report. see if this is showing anything. I'm curious about that dirty data, two gig of dirty data. This is not metadata, that's in the slab. So this is actual data. I don't know why it's sitting dirty and not flushing. Not sure what's happening here right now. I'm not seeing anything. Let me just push it to the side here. I don't want to do a sync yet. I just want to see the effect of that dirty data here. Okay. I'm not seeing anything there. I'm just going to leave that in the background and see what happens. So let me just write a file. I'm just going to do a dd slash dev slash zero into slash scr big file.
So I am seeing the dirty kick off right away as I'm adding to the dirty data from a base of two. I'm only doing one DD here. Here's where I remove those other scratch files that were in var temp. I see the uh, CPU utilization and the CPU or the socket that it's on. Node one. So there's my dirty data growing. Now let's see if I got any. I haven't even started flushing yet. That's a good sign. Now I, my dirty data is topped off at eight gig. So I have much flushing going on. Not a whole lot there. Oh, hang on here. Let me add in here. Uh, edit chart. Oh, we're into a high system time right now, 80% system time. Oh, I wonder what that would be. I got an idea, but let's see. I want to add in here the uh, file system full for scratch file system. there. Uh, not compatible with other plots. System time is done right now. Before I move on, let's see what's going on here. So there's my dirty data. It kind of stalled out here. I got some system time associated with it. We did start getting some write activity from that. So there's my dirty data. Looks like we ran out of memory. Now the problem here and the question is, I've got this huge slab. What's that doing to me? Is it going to cause me problems? I did have, oh, remember that uh, system time here. So I got some system time associated in here. It does look like it correlates to some compaction activity, which would make sense. Since we're out of memory, we've got to do some garbage collection here. So dirty starting to grow again. Not seeing a whole lot of XFS activity. Uh, by the way, I can see, oh, why is it uh, amount of memory free on a node? Why are we getting memory free? We got some sort of trim, I guess. That block trace isn't doing anything. I'm just going to leave that alone. So at this point, there was the whole bunch of system time. I'm assuming that looked like some garbage collection, compaction. I also have some flushing going on in there. It happened too quickly for me to drill in it more closely. But now we are in an IO8 state. Let's bring up top. And I am able to see some memory management. So these K-swap Ds are busy doing something. A get request says they're waiting on I.O. And I got a 12% wait I.O. right now going on. Let me do an I.O. top. And again, most of it is this XFS buff D for XVM0. DF-H. I wanted to see the file system start to fill up here. How big is the file that we've got there, LS-L and SCR? Looks like we're at about 16 gig on this thing. Now again, I'm not liking this. Uh, there was the system time going across everything, context switches. Don't really care about that. Dirty is topped off again. And why? Because it looks like we're out of memory. We do have a little bit of memory available here, but look at, we're trying to push the slab down. I want to do something here. Let's echo a T in the slash proc slash sysrq dash trigger. Oops. So 
I got the slab, but it's not being pushed down very efficiently, in my opinion. Again, I don't like to see that slab get too big. So my dirty looks like it stopped. Everything is in a uh, IOA state, which is why I did the uh, Echo T. I don't see any compaction going on. I do see the memory trims. Again, I threw everything on this at one chart versus trying to sort it out. But I did scans and steals all together. So I can see page steals occurring here. Just going to turn off a bunch of these things. There's the page scans. So that's where it's looking for pages to trim. So when you see that page scan going off, that's KSWAP D busy trying to find pages to recover. And then we actually steal them. Uh, not that one. Here was the one. Right there, page steal normal. And then uh, K-swap scans, or it was direct scans here, right here. And you can see that most of the pages that we're scanning are being trimmed and recovered. What's going on with... So our, we've kind of stalled out on our rights. What's DD doing? PS-EL, ref for DD. So DD is stuck in a get request. Let me tail slash bar log messages. Traceback's not quite done yet. Here was an example uh, of a shell. One of the shells here trying to do a directory make. XFS information. So just to repeat myself, a process is either running, runnable, or sleeping. If it's running, we can use perf to figure out the user time and the system time. If it's runnable, the only thing we got is proxget debug. And if it's sleeping, I'm looking at the tracebacks for it. I'm just waiting for this to come back. After the traceback, we should then see a sked debug. There we are. Now we're in the sked debug. So I don't care about that. Let me do a VI and slash bar log messages. Okay, so I'm into March 1st. Let's just try for an IO underscore sked. So here is an example. Uh, this is case swap D. So here we are in an example of what those get requests were about. KSwap D got woken up. It had some sort of balanced page data. Then it went in to shrink the kernel. Then it went in to shrink the inactive portion of the cache, the uh, cache clean inactive portion. Then it tried to shrink the page list, which resulted in pages being swapped out which initiated a physical I.O. request. See what else we have here. Same sort of thing. Everything, all these case swap Ds are in the same situation. A memory trim, trying to shrink the slab. Then after shrink, trying to shrink the slab. Uh, this one's a little different. So this one was the XFS buff D that we had try to initiate an I.O. And here was, again, the get request wait. These are what are anything I own or scared is being counted as a uh, I.O. wait event. And this is the one on our XVM file system. Another, uh, and this is a write back here. Looks like it's an inode being written by the flush demon here. We're into a uh, k-thread woke up, write back inodes, write cache pages, submit the I.O., and then go to sleep.
what's going on here. Again, I'm not happy here. I've got all my memory being consumed by the slab, and it is slowing me down. It is impacting me. And I've got this IO8. So let me do something else here. I'm just going to try a memhog, 100 gig here. And see if I can push that slab down quicker than the dirty data can. Again, I just have a fine command that might be running, causing the slab to be large. And that's preventing my uh, I.O. from being successful. Oh, what do we got going on now? There's my memory. So there's the memhog running. I am seeing K swap D on node two. That's the node number. Doing the trim. Uh, let me do an F. I need to get the priority out of here, get the share out of here, get the CPU in there, get the end faults in there. So KSwap D is showing it's on CPU 41. Uh, Memhog is on 56. 41 and 56. Oh, 41 is on this one. 56 is on a different node. So what's going on here? Again, really hard time here trying to trim the slab, even with memhog. Let me get the slab out of here. Here's my process growing. And we trim the cache right away, anything that was inactive cache clean. My slab is just being too slow on the trim. I want to do a couple other things here. First of all, let me kill all on the go dot bottle and the uh, code five o three. Get rid of that metadata workload that's going on there. Uh, kill all dash nine on find. So I'm thinking with getting rid of the metadata intensive thing there, the find in particular, can I push my slab down any easier? Dropping data right now. I'm in a memory pressure situation, so we are dropping memory. I do have high system time right now. Are we swapping at all? I can't see any swap activity happening yet. Go back to memory. I'm having real trouble right now getting any sort of response out of anything. I have a suspicion of what's going on. Again, I'm out of memory. And let's see if this is going to catch it here. Ah, oh, not seeing it. Well, actually, I've lost data, so I can't really tell what's going on right now. Let's see if I can get anything out of this. Okay. PMCD is even running anymore. It is running. Data is coming back now. So whatever happened during the interval, I kind of lost it. I don't have any real data to tell me anything. Ah, but I can't, this is what I was suspecting. I can see at the tail end of it where compaction was kicking in. Now, the question was, am I actually trimming my slab down? I am getting a slow trim of the, the slab. I'm going to mess things up a little bit worse here. 
Let me do a sync command and see what that does with my dirty. I should start to see some, well, I'm not seeing a whole lot of swap activity yet. I'm out of memory. I'm trying to push the slab down. When I run out of physical memory, there's going to be some compaction going on as well. I got a sync command going, but it's my my dirty's actually uh, growing rather than uh, shrinking from the sink. Not a whole lot of oh well. I had a big storm here. By the way, this gap here appeared to be compaction. I can only say that by what was going on in the end, but there was a whole bunch of write traffic in there. Look at the uh, number there for writes. But I also had that compaction event here and some other things going on. Transparent huge pages. See if I can find this one here. That was page scan direct. So where are we now? Got a little bit of system time. We got a little bit of IO weight. All my memory's gone. My file system isn't really filling up. Oh, that's right. I never did get to uh, add the uh, file system that I wanted. Let's see. This is file system full. Last time I chose the wrong metric. Okay, so there's the depth command. Actually, let me take root out. Remember, I'm trying to write a file here. I've got a DD going on. And now I've got a sync stuck here, too. Very bad idea to run sync on a serial console, because then that serial console becomes unusable. I am seeing the slab grow down a little bit, and notice as the slab is being trimmed, this top number, I'm starting to get some of my memory total back. That's why I think that there's something in the slab that isn't being counted or showing up in the uh, ProcMem Info slab field. Kind of waiting for this uh, read-write to go away. Sometimes what I'll do is uh, change my samples again. So I can push that out of the way. And now I'm kind of looking more closely, but I don't want that too much. Let's find something else here. There we are. So I do have a lot of I.O. operations per second, a 1,000 or so going on here. Again, I'm not seeing scratch fill up. Dirty is starting to grow. And uh, a little bit of system time, and again, write bytes are in the 20 megabyte. Looks like a lot of little I.O. operations going on right now. Uh, let's see. Context switch is in the 3,000 range. And I'm tr oh, we got another trim going on with the slab. Let's see it here. Getting a lot of these transparent huge page fall, fallbacks. One thing that I'm waiting to see happen is the page cache to start to use transparent huge pages instead of 4K byte page size page buffers, page cache buffers to get into larger page cache buffers. Uh, IRIX was 64K byte. I got about 25 gig in memory still. But again, I'm seeing very little growth of the file on the file system. Slow logging in, that usually means some sort of pressure situation. 
The other thing that can slow you down when you're doing that, though, is DNS lookups, trying to find the route back to where you are, a reverse DNS lookup. If the DNS server is being pounded or slow in respond, that can give you a little bit of time between the SSH and actually getting the password prompt. File system's barely growing. Let me do a watch ls-l on SCR big file. Looks like I'm at 50 gig right now in this file. How much dirty data did I have? I got about 25 gig that's in memory still. We start off at 2 gig. So I am seeing the slab get trimmed. The dirty isn't really growing much, it looks like. It is the memhog that I'm pushing that's causing the trim of the slab. I wonder if that sink ever finished. Is this file even growing? It is slowly growing here. Not seeing a whole lot of changes on the df command. I'm going to do a df-h. So here it's showing scratch at 222 gig right now. Let's do a du dash h on slash scr. Now df is going into the super block for its information, whereas du is going into the inodes themselves, into the file system tree itself. And this may be a problem. I didn't really check to see how many inodes I have on the scratch file system. So I'm just trying to bounce around to see what's going on with things. We're in the uh, half gig range on the interconnect traffic. A lot of that's the flushing again. Here we are on a purse node basis. Node zero has most of itself used. Which one is this? Not seeing a whole lot of freeing up here. Dirty's growing still. We do have XFS activity, showing me my journaling activity here. What's this one down here? And I've really got too much on one chart. That was inode reclaims. So this is what the, uh, the slab is, is being trimmed, trying to recover memory and free up inodes in the memory cache. Not really seeing a whole lot of growth on this file system yet. That memhog's still trying to push the slab down. Let's take a look at the, uh, that DU may take a while as well. I should have watched more carefully. Since we're in a memory pressure situation, it's hard for it to grow the cache and create the environment I need to log in. There we are. Top is showing memhog. DD is running, and memhog is running, and then we've got our swap demons doing the trims. The sync command is still in there doing a write back. I have an RM command in there as well for something. I forget what I was removing. Let's do a PS-EF for uh, RM. So 
something. Uh, this is part of the code bias removing that. Let me just get rid of that. Okay. Now, uh, DD and Memhog, I'm always seeing running, but I can't tell what they're actually doing. There's a flush that's happening. Here's that DU. Let's go into crash. Still growing in memory, still getting the slab trim. Now, I wish that slab could have been trimmed a lot easier here. All systems barely growing here still. There we are. Yes. Let's look at Memhog first. Backtrace on it. Now, what, since it's running, we're not going to see anything on it. That's all pure CPU time. Do PS dash ref for DD. Probably could have done a better one here. Let's take a look at the DD command. That again is also running. So perf is the only way I can look at those. Uh, oh, we had a du command as well. This one I would expect to be more sleeping. There we are. It is in a sleep state. So it looks like it's in a uh, waiting for a page cache buffer. Looks like it's doing some sort of directory, re reading a directory. So this du is sitting there in a directory reading it. Trying to do a looks like a delayed allocation type of thing. I don't know what the DA actually is. I don't know why you do a DA on a read buffer. But then it's trying to get a XFS buffer and then going to sleep on it. Let's we'll see if that's the same state each time. So same thing over and over again, waiting on XFS buff pile wait. We'll quit out of there. Uh, XFS stats. Oops. I need a bigger window. There we are. I'm just wondering why that is. These down here are my XFS buffers, but I'm not seeing a lot of pressure here. I think this is all the DU command that's doing all this stuff. We do have some write system calls going on as well. That would have been the uh, DD command. I'm not sure why we have both insertions and deletions going on. Same thing down here. Can I break out of that DU? No. Kill all.
Yes, it did eventually break out. Oh, did that change anything? I still have a large slab. My, I can start to see my dirty grow here. Am I swapping yet? No swapping yet. Again, because of compaction, I would expect to hit that before I swap. I should check something here, too. Let me go into slash sys kernel mm transparent huge pages. Let me cat defrag. Defrag is off right now, so I shouldn't have any garbage collection or defragmenting of memory. But I would have expected that memhog to actually start filling up swap. Still very little growth in the file system. We're at 270 gig, growing very, very slowly. I think instead of percentage, let me get rid of this one. Add in a uh, chart that's by blocks instead. Actually, it's in gig, it looks like. And still very little growth. And my slab is still big. Let me try a BC free. Actually, instead of doing it that way, let's do a sysctl w on vm.drop underscore caches equals two. We'll trim the slab. Just wondering if that's going to trim it any better or faster than the memhog that I had running. Is memhog even still running? Memhog is done. Wonder what happened. I didn't expect. Didn't expect it to finish, huh? have a memhog here. So it did run here. Let's see something here. Dash W dash big M. It waited for a CPU 100 seconds. Waited on disk for 16 seconds. No swap in IO8 on it. And how big did it get in memory? Well, it shows it got to 100 gig. I'm on a 256 gig machine. So that memhog looks like it was successful. Let me do another memhog. This time let me go 200 gig. Again, I'm trying to get that slab trimmed down. There's the memhog going off. So here's the transparent huge pages failing. We don't have a whole lot of memory to get contiguous large pages. I can see my nodes being used up from the memhog. Now, got a problem here. I'm seeing all the nodes being trimmed kind of at the same time. This isn't going node aware. Let me try something else. This time I want to use CPU map. Let me pin it on a node here. Let me just put it on CPU 63 for node 15.
Okay. Okay, so this time I am seeing only one node. So it looks like to me, I wasn't watching close enough, but it could have been bouncing around due to the CPU scheduler. But now I am off. Let's see, I ran out of memory on one node. Now I'm going off to the second node. Now it looks like I'm off onto a third node. Let's see what node info looks like. I was on the last node trying to push it down. So here I am out of free used. But again, most of that node is the slab. Notice I am getting foreigns and misses now. This is all bad. Let me change the uh, zone reclaim mode. Now this is unique to this kernel as far as I know. To test the uh, reclaim code that wasn't working before, I need to go to a nine. I think that's just unique for this particular kernel. Still trying to trim the slab. I had a BC free or the drop cache is going. Here's my memhog trying to grow. Again, very little growth in the file system. Still got 70 gig of dirty data. Out of memory, so we are failing on our transparent huge page attempts on this mem hog that I'm running, which is trying to do the trim. So it does look like I'm getting a node aware trim now. Kind of hard to tell from all of this. That memhog is still uh, having to go for and here and going off on this node, which would be bad. Uh, we still have uh, 9 gig of dirty data on that one. Oh, the slab. Looks like we just got a good clean of the slab. What happened here? Looks like we finally got our slab out of the way. Dirty data still growing slowly. I'm still kind of, uh, let's see. Again, we're still going off node here for this memhog. We did get the slab trimmed. This is growing, but again, we're going off to this node. We still have nine gig available on that node there. Much was used, 33 gig, and I got 22 gig here and 9 gig here. And then there's about 2 gig that's somewhere else that we can't really see, half a gig here. I'm going to try something here. D look dash summary. Okay. So, ES dash E, let's grep for memhog. I'm going to do something else. D look ls D look the dash summary. Didn't it give me what I wanted? What's going on here? Well, let's try it on the other one here. Where were we? 
wanted to look at the memory map for it. It's 25465. Try it with a dash P. Oh, nope, that's not right either. why it's not finding it. I'm just kind of suspecting a uh, syntax problem here. I'm getting a D-look, but I wanted a D-look summary. I just wanted to see the end of it. Not sure how long I want to wait here. Do a more on a D-file. So I was trying to get the node that it was on. This time, D-Look Summary is actually doing something. I don't know what right now. Go back to here. So right now, I've got about 80 gig that is in the, uh, oh, we're kicking in some right backs here. Where was my dirty? Look at the right backs that are backing up now. For some reason, we're suddenly getting into right backs backing up. Uh, what could that be from? Let's see if I can get anything correlated. So I see a little bit of right back going on. Here's my memhog growing. Numalink traffic all over the place. Not real heavy on megabytes transferred. I mean, I got eight, yeah, eight drives out there to spread my I/O across, but this isn't very efficient. Even more write backs backing up. The file system doesn't look like it's keeping up very well. Oh, there we go with our D-Look summary. It's almost like something has changed with the D-Look command. Let's just see what this does for me. It's giving me the address range on the node, but it's not giving me the number of pages on that node. Still very little growth in the file system. We started off at like 220 gig, now I'm at 320 gig. Gotten about a 100 gig out of that file that we wanted. By the way, DLOOK writes its output to standard error, not standard out. So 
as I mentioned before, DLOOK is extremely verbose here, and I'd like a DLOOK summary to get rid of all of this stuff and just give me the uh, totals on a per node basis, number of pages. That's what I'm waiting for there. I am surprised to see so much write back. What have we got for write backs? Yeah, I got 8 to 10 gig as a write back. That again tells me the file system isn't keeping up. Just trying to see everything at once here. By the way, you can run DLOOK and grep for uppercase swap to find out if a process has pages out on the swap. I wonder if that sync ever finished anyway. So I think we could see where that drop cache is actually got the kernel slab trimmed quicker than Memhog did. Sync is still running here. So I still got that DD going. I still got Memhog going. This is the flush daemon that we're seeing. Notice the sync command looks like it's in a sync inode situation. Not a whole lot of inodes there at 11,000. That thing's still going. Now what I want to do here is uh, figure out how much space that file I'm writing into the scratch file system is. I'm going to leave this alone. I've kind of given up on this right now. It's just too verbose. Go into slash SCR. So I got a 172 gig file. I want to remove the file and then see what happens. Don't really care about Shemem. Let me just get rid of that one. There's my memory. Slab is real small now, that Memhog. Did we do any swapping yet? Still no real swap. 250 meg out on swaps. No swapping, we're still kind of trimming. Okay. I don't know what I killed, but suddenly the P switches are gone. Everything there looks the same in terms of the workload running. Dirty data, I got about 10 gig on each blade. Out of the 30 gig, about a third of each blade is dirty data. Now when I get into a uh, CPU set situation, which we're gonna do after a break here, the dirty would be contained within the CPU set. Right now it's system wide. And look at the number of misses that I'm getting here. So I'm basically out of memory on all my nodes at this point. You can see that here. Are we starting to swap yet? Nope, still no swapping going on. Still trying to do a trim. We do have some cache clean in here as well. The stuff that's going is dirty, right back, and then clean. So 
I've got 320 gig used on the file system. What I'm going to do now is remove that file and see what happens. I have now removed the file. Not there. But I have not recovered the disk space yet. So I have a 180 gig file. Removed it. I don't have the ability to run a DU right now because that scratch had 380 million inodes in it, which is why the DU command would take too long. So I can't do a direct comparison here. Let me do a watch. Now let me do it on slash SCR. Oh, I don't want I know, so I wanted just disk space. So there's our 350 gig used. And I still have uh, 80 gig of the file in memory. My rice have actually stopped, it looks like, or really slowed down here. In fact, you can see where the right back stopped right there. Oh, let me get out of here. PS E, let's E L, ref for DD. Oops. There's the DD command. I want to do an S trace dash P on two four six six one. So notice that DD command is still writing, and we're writing in five twelve byte blocks. I probably should have tried a DD and set it to like a sixty four k byte block, and that file will get allocated quicker. So the DD command is still running, even though I've removed the file. Let me do a kill all on DD. Let's do an IO top. All I'm seeing is case swap DIO right now. I did remove the DD command, which is going to uh, take it out of this. DS-E, grep for DD. So the DD command is gone, so IO top won't show me anything. And we've got two drives busy. I'm wondering SDE, huh? I was wondering about the log, but basically SDI is taking everything that we got here, and SDE is not being involved. Uh, how did I have that here? I'm looking at my notes. D and E were the same file system, were the same strike group. So my IOs are too small to spread across both drives. So the first drive's getting pounded on and the second drive's doing nothing. I wonder if we've got any IO merges or anything, IO stat dash X. I do see some merges going on in here. By the way, when using IO stat, the very first record is since boot. And it's something that you would normally ignore. I'm not seeing a whole lot of IO operations being merged. I still have 70 gig of dirty data. And we're only writing about 10 gig or 10 megabyte per second out to the disks. How about our disk space, DF-H and slash SCR? So again, we're still at 350 gig. The process is gone. The file is gone, but we still have the assets in memory. 
I wonder LSOF pipe sort dash RBN. I should have done this earlier. Nothing of interest there. This is all just throwaway. Okay, I'm still not really flushing very good. Is, do we even have the flush demon running? Remember, I changed my dirty and dirty background. So I do see the flush demon occasionally running here. And I have a sync command running, too. That DS space isn't going to come back until that dirty is done. Now I'm writing pretty small here. This thing was designed for 512 or 256 K byte request, and I'm way, way lower than that, only getting 70 or 80 K instead of 256 K. MHOG is still running, SYNC is still running. So I got rid of MEMHOG just to see if that helps me at all. Well, that's interesting, too. It took a while for this memory. When I did the kill of the memhog, we saw the process space go away, but the free didn't come back right away. I've never really noticed that before. Again, this is a uh, test kernel. Now we're starting to get a trim of the cache clean. A little bit of slab reduction because we don't have the descriptor for that cache clean there. So this is where I think that I've got a uh, something that should be reported as a behavioral type of problem. I'm not getting data flush very. Oh, now look at suddenly. Not sure what was holding it up. But now we are getting that dirty data being flushed out. Let's try a uh, watch DF-H on a CR. So I got 350 gigs still being used. Again, I don't know why it took so long for that dirty data to be dealt with. And I'm waiting for this flush to finish, and then we should see the disk space come back. Process is gone. File is gone. But the file system still sees the space allocated for it. We got all this dirty data, and we should be get there. We just got the disk back once that flush was done. Now, why that flushing wasn't happening more aggressively is a question I have. Kind of interesting to me, the right bytes actually fell down when we were doing that. Maybe it was lots of little IOPS. There's the disk space being freed. Huh. I'm just noticing there's my dirty being trimmed, but I don't see many writes going on during the trim. So eventually it must have figured out that the file is gone and the process is gone and just threw that stuff away without actually having to uh, write it out to disk. Now, this kind of behavior will vary from uh, kernel to kernel. But that was what I was trying to demonstrate, that I don't get that disk space back until the dirty is back. Now, let's try this one last time. I want to check DD. I want the uh, block size. BS, it looks like. I 
OBS. Let's try that one. DD OBS equals, uh, I want to do a 256K. Let me bring up a calculator here. Just getting the exact power to 65536. This would be your most friendly common denominator for I.O., which is also default stripe unit size. Actually, I should probably, this thing was designed for 256. Let me uh, actually increase this. Let me use 262114. Because of the stripe characteristics of the lawn, that was the optimal request size. That was the XVM stripe unit size, which matched two disks in the RAID's lawn that was a 128K byte segment size. Do an S trace on that. Oh, it's still only doing a 512 byte request. That's not what I wanted. Doesn't seem like it worked as it's described here. Well, those were reads rather than writes. Let me, uh, there was also a, uh, another one here. Hang on. IBS for inputs. So let's try this again. Okay, we're not even two five nine one zero. We're not even seeing anything right now. There we are. So now we're more efficient. We were doing things in a two fifty six K by chunk, which is the optimal request size for that file system, XFS underscore info on slash scratch. We're now matching this. And if I bring up my calculator again. that
going to see how quickly I can get this growing. Now, I upped the dirties and the dirty ratios, so I should be able to get about half of my memory dirty under 25, something like that. And I'm close to uh, 80 right now. dirty data. There's the rights are going on. Periodic wake up with a flush. See if we can catch that here. We should see the flush demon. I don't see any disk activity going right now, but I do still see the fall. Hang on. That's why. Flush demon starting. Got about 100 gig that's dirty. I should be able to get to about 122 before DD and we start getting IO8. Note there's no IO8 right now. Flush. We're in a flush now. Oh, not quite. Now it's kicked off. Now we've stopped, it looks like. I'm not going to get any more dirty data. I can't have more than half of my memory dirty, right back, NFS unstable. We still got flushing going on. Let me go back here, turn off the dirty. There's the flushing that's pretty solid right now. And I can't see anything before because I resized the number of samples. So I'm at 300 gig in my file system. Now, let me do an LSOF sort dash K seven dash NRB, pipe it into more. So assuming the file is open, I can now see where the file is in the cache. So now, let me do the same thing here. I'm there already. Let me remove the file. Let's see how big it is first. I've got 138 gig in the file. Remove the file. Bring up top. So DD is still there. Even though the file it's writing to has had the inode removed, It's still running. Let's do an S trace on it. And it's still reading, writing, reading, writing. But my dirty has stopped. I can't get any more dirty data. Let me do that LSOF. And this time it is showing the file, but it is showing that it is in a deleted situation. Now that DD is just going to
going to keep going. Let's see the IO top. So there's the DD still going, the flush demon flushing it, but the I note itself is gone. And the file system is still growing in space consumption. So let me kill that DD now. So there is a question about uh, DU and DF, and DF showing things full, but DF, DU not. And I'm making an assumption right now that one of the things that could be happening is that the metadata, the inode, is no longer in the file system tree, but because the data is not flushed yet. So notice I've killed it, and now it is actually trimming the stuff that's in the cache and did stop the I.O. This is kind of a new behavior for this particular kernel. Normally when I remove the file, uh, I still see the I.O. going off to disk until all that dirty is gone. So it's throwing away my dirty now. There was, let's see, I can't see it anymore. There is something for write cancels, where we've got writes stacked up but then canceled them. But I don't know how I could see that. That's only available on a per process basis, and this process DD is gone now. So there's my dirty being thrown away. And once the sync is done, my disk space should can come back. There it is. I think we should take a break here. Is there any comments or questions on the game I was playing here? Okay. I want to do one last thing here. I'm going to reboot the system. Before I reboot the system, I want to put a boot CPU set in place and a check config CPU set in place. Then we'll take a break. So. Let me go into ITSE first and vi the elilo.com and slash 11 sp2 underscore one is the default stanza that I'm booting from. So in here I'm going to do a oops init equals slash sbin slash boot cpu set. Again, if I'm in a React situation, it's an sbin react.pl script that will do the same thing. This will create the CPU sets before we fire up in it and try to contain most everything within the boot CPU set. I'm also going to do a UV config to get things in sync to make sure that that survives the reboot. I'm going to run eLilo too. Now let me check on the file itself. And it is in there. The other thing I've got to do here, I'm going to take the first socket in my system. So CPU map. I'm going to take the first node for my boot CPU set, 0 through 3, 32 through 35. MEMS was just node zero, and I'm going to add in a verbose. And just double check it. Now that verbose is going to be visible during the kernel boot, but would not show up in var log messages because it, the file system isn't mounted yet. Thirty-two through thirty-five, zero through three. Yep, that looks good. Now, one thing I do advise on these big systems nowadays is to check how big your slab is and stuff before you shut down, so that you know how much. I know metadata might have to be synced. I've had cases where I had a 100 gig slab, and when I tried to shut down the file system or shut down the system, it took a half hour or more 
to synchronize the file system and deal with all the INO data that was cached. Okay. So let me just cat slash proc slash mem info. We should be all clean at this point. So I have a real small slab. And no dirty. I've got five minutes after. Let's come back at uh, 25 after, about 16, 17 minutes. And then we'll do the uh, NUMA lab. <laughs> 